Hello world, welcome to the dependency injection video number three, where we will answer one of the questions we set back in the first episode of this series. A good friend of mine that currently works on a legacy code app recently decided to upgrade the code base and refactor it by introducing a design pattern to his application in the presentation layer, specifically model view presenter. And to make it even better, he decided to write unit tests for it. Of course, for those patterns to work properly, dependency injection is essential in the mix. This is something he had never done before. At some point, he asked me for a review of the code, and it was all pretty good, except that I saw an instance of an interactor class being created inside his presenter. At that point, as we have already seen, I told him that this interactor would be even better injected from the outside instead of this creation being tightly coupled with the presenter. His reply was, oh, okay, I did not know whether I should inject that as well. But how could I know what should be injected and what should not be injected and created from the inside? Should I just inject everything, even a HASMAP or a simple model class that I use to pass data? That's perfect timing to answer that question in our video today. What should we inject and what should we encapsulate? The answer to this question is pretty straightforward and will make a lot of sense down the line. Are you ready? Okay, we should inject objects but encapsulate data structures. The difference between an interactor and a model is that an interactor is a class that contains functionality and exposes behavior, and that's what we call an object, while the model or any custom structure that holds data, such as a DTO, is simply a data structure. It just contains data and that's it. Objects expose behavior. Data structures simply wrap around data. They do not offer any functionality, but instead they hold data that the classes that do offer functionality can use. Of course, in the real world, it's not always easy to have a purely behavioral class or a purely data containing class. Most of the time, every class you will come across will be a mixture that contains both. However, even then, we can use common sense and understand what the dominant role of the class is. Even when we have a mixture of functionality and data structure elements inside a class, which is acceptable in the real world, it's important to at least acknowledge that fact, that this is not optimal design, and we should always keep striving for the clearest possible separation of those two. Now, the reason most classes do not belong purely on one of those two categories is probably due to developers not knowing that these two should be different categories of classes. I also wanted to include this segment in this video, that in Java, the base class for every class is called object. This is what every class we create inherits implicitly. This is misleading, as it gives us an idea that everything is an object. However, experienced developers know that this is actually a myth Data structures are not objects, as they should not expose behavior. In Kotlin, this object class is named any, and that is a far better naming decision, in my opinion. Okay, let's see a few examples to really grasp the difference between those two, to understand what we should inject and what we should encapsulate. In the following examples, I will be using late init vars so as to keep the suspense on how each object will be created. Case study number one. In the traditional MVP, model view presenter design pattern, the activity which takes the role of the view references a presenter. But who should create this presenter? To answer this question, we ask ourselves, is a presenter an object or is it a data class? Does it expose behavior or does it contain data? Well, a presenter is a clear case of an object. It is surely not a data structure, so we should inject it. That was easy. Next, let's dive inside that presenter. What does it reference? 
Well, in our simple application here, it appears that our presenter references a use case. A use case, often called an interactor, is an object that performs an operation for us and notifies us when it contains and obtains a result. For example, in a food delivery application, we would have a list of restaurants in the main screen, for example. So fetching those restaurants should be assigned to use case because we would not want to pollute our presenter with that logic. We could request those restaurants from a local cache or from a network, but we simply want to get a list of them in our presentation layer. We do not care where that list comes from. So should we inject this use case or should we create it from within the presenter? Again, we ask the same question. We, we, we follow the same rule of thumb. Is this behavior or data? Again, it's pretty easy. And if you're not so sure or have doubts, remember that most classes are a mixture of both. But that's the real world. In this case, an interactor contains behavior since it does something. It performs an operation and notifies us. So we inject it. Now let's go inside that use case and see its dependencies. We see here that we have a reference to the retrofit API Okay, and also a reference to a list of restaurants that will be returned. So what do we inject here and what do we encapsulate? First of all, retrofit is obviously a networking interface and therefore classifies as behavior. But the list of objects? Well, this is a data structure. So this is a case of encapsulation. We should not inject that. So we inject retrofit, but we encapsulate the data structure, the list of objects. This video was a very important one and the last one before we actually get hands-on with dependency injection. It's okay if currently this concept sounds a bit vague or abstract. It still is a very important topic to have as a foundation before moving on. In the next video, we will take a simple Android application and inject properties using pure dependency injection. So stay tuned for that. I am really excited to sharing it with you. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to continuing this journey of dependency injection in the next video. Take care. Bye.